Hey, what's up guys, Aaron here, and welcome back to another episode of my F1 2020 My Team Career Mode, episode number 47 today for the Vietnam Grand Prix in Season 3. If you guys did miss the previous one at Bahrain, then be sure to go check that one out before you see this one uploaded yesterday, three days in a row. I'm really treating you guys indeed this week to kick off this brand new season, and we come into this episode then with finally the ultimate engine power upgrade. So technically now, any engine upgrades we put on the car will only be for fuel consumption, and ERS. We've got the max engine power, pure engine power we can get out of this Renault power unit. Of course, we've already got an upgrade of us in, in a way from going from Honda to Renault because coming into this season, the Renault performance was maxed out 100 apparently in the selection screen we had between seasons two and three. But now we've maxed out what we can do on the R&D tr uh, tree as well as the kind of base level of the engine. So we have got the best engine on the grid once again because Mercedes was technically ahead of us just before this upgrade. We've also got a major uh, durability upgrade that came in for the control electronics, so hopefully those won't wear out too much. But uh, as I uh, kind of said last episode, I'm not going to kind of delve into another upgrade quite yet. We can technically afford to do another upgrade, but I want to assess where we're at with the car around Hanoi to see if we've got too much power now for the car to handle in the corners, you know what I mean? Because we had that in a few cases last season where we came to a few tracks and I was getting a lot on this steer and it was almost a little bit on edge in the corners because there was almost so much power spinning up from the rear tyres uh, compared to what aerodynamics we had. So I want to see how that goes. And in light of that, I'm going to go ahead and spend some money on upgrading the HQ facilities on the aerodynamic side. 12 million for build time improvement uh, because I think that will honestly be the next place. Yes, we might also look into the chassis side of things, but there's probably more chance we're going to look into the aero because it's an ultimate engine power upgrade. That's a lot of power. So I suspect we're going to need some downforce in the coming races probably. So I just want to see how it goes at around Hanoi assess if I'm correct in that thinking and then we'll actually go ahead and purchase those upgrades and of course hopefully if the HQ upgrade comes in in time we'll actually reduce the build time of those upgrades as well so it's actually worthwhile waiting before that 12 million investment comes through and then purchase the R&D uh, upgrades for that for that part of the tree. But going ahead then towards Hanoi in terms of the activity timeline doing some more weight training for Verstappen as you saw there he was 98 rated so we kind of need to keep on this training week in week out to make sure we maintain him at 98 99 and 100 rated in that little uh, turn at two overall range because uh, our personnel was not quite enough to naturally get him to 100. If we do upgrade the personnel even further later this season, I think naturally he might sit at 100. But right now, I think he naturally sits at 98 rated and then with the training midweek between races, he'll get to 100. So I expect we've got him back to 100 by the time we get to the race weekend. And speaking of the race weekend, you can see that ultimate upgrade comes in. So a nice upward trajectory for us, but we are not the stars of the show into this one. I thought, okay, ultimate upgrade. Surely we're, we're bringing the most upgrades out of any team this race weekend. Look at McLaren go. They have leapfrogged Racing Point, Ferrari, and also Red Bull by like literally a pixel there. They're ahead of Red Bull. They're now apparently the third fastest team on the grid. So McLaren out of nowhere, I'm, uh, we might be seeing Norris and Ocon fighting at the sharp end or near enough. I mean, they have had two decent races, especially uh, Bahrain. Lando did well to recover and obviously Australia was quite a strong one for them in qualifying and the race. So let's see. It's going to be quite interesting. Uh, we already had a kind of dynamic of us as myself and Verstappen versus Leclerc and the Ferrari and then the two Red Bulls or mostly Sainz and the Red Bull. But now could the McLarens join us and could, uh, could Mercedes be pushed down even further if they keep having these disaster race weekends where nothing goes smoothly for them? I guess all those questions hopefully will be answered in this coming race weekend. So interesting times very much. I think uh, I'm hoping that they'll continue on. I hope that all the other teams around us, they can keep everyone on their toes basically by continuing continuously upgrading. We don't have like these little plateaus like we had in season two. I I'd like to see everything jumbled up race to race. It'd be quite exciting. Obviously so far I've won a race. Leclerc's won a race. So let's see if we can have a third different winner in three races. Well into Q1 Verstappen is looking very strong indeed. 1.2 seconds faster than me in Q1. I will admit obviously you guys know I'm never the fastest in that first session. That's kind of my, my session to get to grips with the car. Try and find the limits uh, in anger driving this uh, machinery. But uh, still, to be 1.2, that's very, very quick. 7 tenths ahead of Hamilton. Um, but obviously, things need to heat up in the second and third part, and hopefully we can speed up a little bit. But Verstappen looking supreme. Obviously, it's a new circuit, so I, even three seasons in, I've still not completely got to grips with it. I actually really love Sector 3. I've really flown with it, but Sector 1 still cannot get the kind of right groove to 
rotate the corners as quick as I feel I could. I had the same sort of thing with Baku, of course, when that first came into the F1 game and the F1 calendar. And now I've actually started to really find a decent flow around that circuit. So it may be just a case of time, basically, as we keep on coming to Hanoi on the F1 games. But of course, this is the first year with it. So I don't think it will happen in this year's game cycle. This will just have to be, I need to accept one of those circuits where my teammate might be uh, very quick versus especially a 100 rated teammate like Verstappen. He's going to be rapid. But that first lap of ours wasn't too amazing. We're down in P8 as it stands, but that second lap, so much better. Second uh, sector purple. First sector was green as well by a few tenths. You would have seen into turn one. I just gained some time by just braking a little bit later, so still just finding that confidence under braking. Allah kind of like I had an issue with at Baku, you know, just having to go a little bit too early on the brakes as I just you know, wasn't confident in myself and the turning, but that's a much better showing. We're P2 now. Verstappen is actually down a lower than us in P4. Science right up there. I mean, that top four is that same kind of, you know, poetic top four I talked about last episode. You know, Science, myself, Leclerc, Verstappen, great to see both McLarens make it through, pipping out the Alpha Tauris and the two Renault Works team. So the upgrades are working for McLaren, maybe not as well as I thought they would, because if they're on paper better than Red Bull, I thought they would be right up there beating Science and Ricardo. but maybe they still have some, uh, some kind of, you know, fine-tuning to do with those upgrades of theirs on the setups and whatnot, but we go into now the last part of qualifying, very overcast, I must say. It's not going to rain this race weekend, but it just got very gloomy and dull. This uh, first run on a set of scrub uh, soft tyres like I uh, had to do last episode because we burned two sets in Q2. I should probably start taking just soft sets into, into the race weekend to be fair, but I just keep on forgetting to do that. But across the line for us, it's an okay lap time to say it was a U set. P6 it is as we cross the line. I think P7 by the time we get back in the garage, but we're going to go straight back out. We have 2 minutes 20, but I made a little bit of an error here. So you saw there, I went for a flying lap because I, I, I thought there was enough time but I really should have just seen that 220 historically 220 means there's not enough time for you to go automatically out on a flyer you have to manually drive out and so I don't know for whatever reason the computer just takes its sweet time to load you into the flying lap a lot longer than it does for you the, you, the player and so uh, I've made a massive error here and we, we we're out we're that that's it checkered flag so a bit of a uh, anticlimactic ending here to the qualifying portion of this video uh, that's my mistake I just yeah, I put my hands up. I just completely just forgot that. Oh, yeah, 220. Probably not enough time to go out automatically. I should have just driven out. I would have made it round if I just drove out manually. But there it is then. So we are now uh, in P7 for tomorrow's race. To be fair, we were this low down for yesterday's race at the Bahrain Grand Prix. And that turned out pretty okay. But the difference is our teammate is showing that the car has the pace for pole position. The fastest car on track by nearly four tenths to science there. Our former teammate in second place in the race. Red Bull. If I improved, I would have proved at least by, you got to say minimum three tenths because that's the tyre difference of a new set of tyres and maybe one more tenth on top of that. So that would be that would have put me on the second row at least or there or thereabouts. So a uh, bit of a, an annoyance for me, but uh, we'll we see how it goes. We've got uh, the likes of Lando Norris just ahead of us in the McLaren with the upgrade. So who knows about the race pace and Merck. I mean, Hamilton's there in P5, Bottas P9. Can, they, can Hamilton even get on the board? He's scored no points so far this season. So let's just wait and see about that. So let's go to the grids and go for our third round of this season. The Formula One circus has arrived in Southeast Asia once more as we usher in a new era and get ready to go racing here in Vietnam. A lap of Hanoi circuit then, 3.4 miles around the Vietnamese capital. A number of the 23 corners take their inspiration from other great circuits, hopefully creating plenty of passing opportunities. And as always, a man with plenty of racing experience joins me in the commentary box. Today, it's Anthony Davidson. Tell me, Ant, you're no stranger to surviving the melee of turn one. So how do you keep out of trouble when there's so much going on around you? Well, the throttle goes both ways, Crofty. You've got to have the discipline not to try and win the race on the first lap. So always be prepared to lift early and give those around you more space. Trying to be the last of the late breakers with half a dozen cars around you may pay off from time to time, but it's also a great way to lose your front wing. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's race. Max Verstappen put in a fantastic lap yesterday and he starts from pole position. A very happy Carlos Sainz will start second. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Ricardo, Hamilton, Charles Leclerc and Norris. The owner driver, 
De Vries, Bottas, and Esteban Ocon, Gasly, Kvyat, Nobuharu Matsushita, and Albon, Russell, Stroll, Antonio Giovinazzi, and Kevin Magnussen, Grosjean, Aitken, Latifi, and Sergio Perez completes our grid. And now it's time to head down to the track. No one in Q2 bothered to try a alternate strategy from the medium tyres. And that's because the race strategy says it's a one stop from uh, soft to, to hard tyres for the first time. I think I don't think it said this in the previous season. So uh, we've tried one stops, I think, all the time at Hanoi. And they, the first season didn't work out too well because we obviously had that calamity of a puncher or front wing damage. Second season, we tried to hang it with the big boys. Didn't quite work. But this time, I mean, our, our car has the pace for the top the top spot so maybe this time will work out maybe a one stop will be the only way we get back into this race if hopefully maybe others are trying a two stop who knows but let's get into this and make up for a, a, a silly mistake really on saturday and get this car back to where it sh really should be as we now rev up for five red lights for round number three of season three here from hanoi for the vietnam grand prix fire lights are out and we are underway and it is an absolute stonking start for us there look at that trying to make it three wide into turn one. Bit of an easy break zone, but then in the initial second phase, getting the nose in, still trying to get it around the outside of Hamilton or Leclerc, but we've actually done Lando Norris and the McLaren. Those two, oh, look at that. Leclerc, real snappy with Hamilton, almost really jolts the car out to try and force Hamilton wide and say, no, this is my piece of tarmac. Meanwhile, for us, we sat behind, probably could have been a bit more aggressive with Hamilton, but if I was on his left-hand side, I would have been completely punted off into the wall, actually, looking at that uh, collision between Leclerc and Hamilton as we squeeze out Bottas indefinitely there. Don't want it, uh, anything to do with him. And now Norris is hampering him on the inside and the McLaren gets the job done. So a bit of a shaky slow start once again from the Silver Arrows in black for this uh, game, obviously. But we're up into P6 then. So all things considered, it's it's an okay start. It initially started off really well, but I think I was a bit too cautious into that turn one. I probably could have cut across Leclerc and Hamilton and got that job done within one apex but oh well we go again now lap number two trying to chase after Hamilton oh, oh Hamilton with a big mistake what was that Hamilton he scored zero points this season he just doesn't look himself like that does not look like Hamilton's AI from the game let alone in real life but we have a run on him now but he slowed us up so much that he's even hindered us because Norris now has an even better slingshot down this main straight on the right it's going to be nearly three wide Hamilton cuts across me we make some contact thankfully no damage and he actually gets right well just fully tries to squeeze out Norris off the circuit what is going on with Hamilton in this car in season three nay for the last you know 10 12 races because it started way back in season two that he's been on this streak of just poor runs and poor races as a whole as we squeeze out to freeze that was because he tried to be opportunistic because uh, we were sat there watching Hamilton v Norris and that slowed me down yet again um, but look at this mistake just he just loses the back end the tires get a bit too hot i don't know but it's such a weird mistake for his kind of AI to make. You just don't see that often. You see it with some of the other drivers, but I just wouldn't think Hamilton would be making that kind of error. So, very, very peculiar. So, we go chasing after Norris, who's still maintaining a lead over ourselves. Uh, unsurprisingly, the McLaren looks pretty good in a straight line, so I wonder if that's what they upgraded into this race weekend, or maybe they just reduced drag. Meanwhile, De Vries is defending or attacking against Bottas. Can't quite tell because before, De Vries was technically ahead of Bottas, so I guess it's defending, and Bottas has overtaken him. But, uh, meanwhile, uh, further up the other end of, uh, of, of that, all of that is uh, uh, Dan Ricciardo in second place leading a train of Sainz and Leclerc from P2 to P4 and then all is calm in Max Verstappen's world our teammate uh, with a good few seconds already to the two Red Bull cars so Max looking like he might just dominate this race I can't lie which is going to put us to shame a bit of a bit in a, in a bit of a way this episode but to be fair as I said it's a new circuit on the F1 game I don't think you can ever expects to be as quick as your computer AI teammate on a new track like this when you're still trying to get used to it. And it took me a, a fair few games to get used to Baku, remember? But now I actually don't mind it too much. So uh, I think it'll just be about time then in terms of finding the speed around this circuit. But right now it's all about damage limitation we, as we go down the inside of Lando Norris on lap number four. But he gets really aggressive with us and tries to squeeze us to the wall. He uses his front wing as a mechanism to push us wide there. So we maintain uh, right behind him. But we're right off his shaft. 
with DRS open, looking to make the move ahead of us. Engine failure, and that's going to be very awkward. Can we squeeze left? Oh, yes, we can. Just about. Norris just gives us the room, but that's Hamilton. Hamilton is out of the Vietnam Grand Prix, surely, with a massive amount of smoke coming out of the engine. There he is, out, as we're still battling Norris. We switch back from right to left on the outside. Now into sector three, close as you want, but we get the job done, and we're up into P5. It was very hairy, though, with Hamilton's engine failure, because I was basically either going to smash right to the back of him, or Norris was going to give me the room, but that is Lewis Hamilton out of the Vietnam Grand Prix, and so that will be a third race in a row this season. He scores no points. That is unbelievable, and that is on board from Norris. You can see there, literally at the last minute did Norris decide to give me some room to actually survive that, uh, what, what, what would have been a probably, probably horrific crash with Hamilton rear-ending him, so uh, thanks for that. So uh, we live to fight for another day, and we actually overtook him as well, so we can now chase after these guys as Leclerc as we watch on overtakes Ricardo. So Sainz has already swapped positions with, uh, with Ricardo, and Ricardo has gone down one more position, so the Aussie man struggling in that Red Bull car. So Leclerc's up into P3, Sainz P2, Verstappen still leads the way. Lap number seven then. So a few laps after that uh, incident with Hamilton DNFing out this GP, we are slowly starting to reel in Ricardo. You can see what I said about sector three. I do really like it. There's a good flow to it, especially with our car. And we're gaining a good few tenths in this sector alone and getting away from that fight behind us. It's uh, Bottas now has got ahead of Norris. So I guess Norris, I think his tyre is starting to go off. So the McLaren may be quite quick in theory, you know, on a base level, but maybe it's tyre where it's still not up to scratch to kind of hang it with the big boys potentially. Speaking about ties, you may have seen on the top left, Verstappen did pit on lap number seven there, so I don't know if he's going to convert to a two-stop, because that seems a little bit early. I think we're all pitting around lap 10 or 11 for the one-stop on the hards as we have a little look at Ricardo, and I regret actually not sticking my nose in there, because he actually holds up even more so than uh, we would have maybe done going down the inside, but Alter got kind of flashbacks to that fight with Norris where he just completely pushed me towards the wall, so he go again on the kind of correct way, uh, place to make the move, I guess, into the break zone with DRS here on the left. Very, very close. Surprised he didn't squeeze me on the left because the AI, when we first start playing this game, the, the the natural racing line, they used to squeeze you so hard on the left. I Maybe uh, maybe that coding's changed a, a tad because Ricardo gave me some room to work with, thankfully, on the left-hand side to go down his inside. And uh, we're up into P3 as it stands. It will be P2 because science has just come in. Uh, and in fact, Leclerc's in as well. So it'll be P1, actually. So Leclerc comes in on lap 9. Uh, as does signs, we go continue on for lap number 10. Like I said, I thought we were going to lap 10 or 11 for the one stop here. So it's going to be me and Ricardo in, I think, on this lap. Yes, Ricardo's in. But on the mini map, look at where Verstappen is. And he's on a look at the top left. He's on a set of soft ties. So Verstappen has moved away and is doing something different to us. He's doing a two stop. So to be fair, it seems like he has the pace for it. You know, he's a good few tenths faster than all of us. So. I guess that just shows how quick he is around this circuit, how much I've been put to shame in the same car, because he's going to do a two-stop, and I wouldn't be surprised if he, if he still ends up winning this race. It's going to be a bit of a risk, though, because there is a potential for there is potential for some traffic around here. I guess it's just how quick he is on, on this stint. If he's quick enough, he may just pit and come out ahead, ahead of everyone. Maybe that's the plan for him this afternoon. Meanwhile, for us, we come out just ahead of Lando Norris, familiar name there, but he's also on this soft. So we've got quite a few people surprised Surprisingly, trying a two-stop here, but myself, Ricardo, and Sainz are definitely not any of those guys, but uh, we've got Norris on soft, Russell ahead of us in the Alfa Romeo also on soft, but I think he's out of sync. I don't think he's actually pit yet uh, at all in this Grand Prix, but Norris and Ricardo fighting me behind, and Norris, you can see, seeming pretty punchy on the on the soft compound of tyres, as you would expect, um, so we need to kind of be wary of that. Let's not fight him too much, because he's not in our race today, I don't actually think, even though we were fighting him in stint one. Now that we know he's doing a two-stop, he's going to be on a completely different piece of the, uh, the track, basically, come the end of the race, I think. But even though he might be quicker than us right now at this moment in time in the race, uh, we're both definitely quicker than Russell, so let's try and get past the Alfa Romeo then, using DRS on that very tight exit of the last corner. To the inside we go, a little bit late though, very, very late, too late, in fact, and so we're nearly off circuit. We pull it back though, and just about drift the car through by getting first gear and getting the rear end stepped out to get the nose turn and maintain uh, ourselves on the track, at least, not on the left-hand side of the exit curve, but we lose the position to 
Russell. Now we're off centre and uh, off kind of momentum on the right-hander. And uh, Norris is on our inside there. There's no other way to explain it. He's going to go for a move, maybe. We go for the dive and Russell. It's <laughs> so close. That was just going to be so bad for us if we cut our nose in. So I backed out that one, played it a bit clever and a bit safe there. Didn't want to play some ping pong in the middle of this section. But uh, Norris looking very aggressive then on those softs. And uh, I've got to say the hard ties, as much as I've said I like them so far in the last few episodes, right now at Hanoi, they're feeling a little bit hard for us. Who would have thought the hard ties? But they're not rubbering in quite yet. So we need to wait for them to wear out a little bit to feel a little bit better. But uh, either way, we're going to make a dive on the outside of Russell because his ties have gone off the absolute cliff. I don't know why he stayed out or how he's ended up here at this part of the circuit, to be honest. But there he is, looking very slow. And uh, now we can go chasing after Norris once again, or at least trying to stay within one second, maybe, of DRS on lap 13. Oh, Norris has made a mistake. It's a huge blunder for the Brits. What is it? What's going on with that corner of British drivers today? The first Hamilton, now Norris. It's only left for me now in this race, I guess, and Russell at some point. We're now having a drag race with the McLaren now, down into the hairpin once again. Side by side with Norris here. This time, no Mercedes blowing up in front of us to try and block us off, and we can get to the apex and overtake the McLaren once again. So we're going to be frustrating the Brits for sure, but this was a replay of what went on. It, it was a carbon copy, really, of, of uh, Hamilton's mistake there. So we're seeing a few more AI mistakes uh, this season so far, but in peculiar, in particular this race, that's a bit odd to see the same mistake twice in the same sort of fashion uh, from two different drivers, but uh, there we go. I mean, it's a little bit more natural than a uh, robotic AI that never make mistakes, I guess, but uh, for us, lap 14, we just get absolutely swamped by Norris there. I tried to give him the room to go side by side, and again, he's just a bit rude and a bit aggressive, and he forces me towards the wall, so we lose some uh, speed on the kind of back straight, and we're actually having to go a little bit defensive and weave around to make sure we don't lose position to De Vries in the Ferrari and Bottas in the sole Mercedes car left in this Grand Prix. Behind them, Ricardo and Ocon are scrapping away. The two in real life Renault teammates now in Red Bull and uh, McLaren uh, respectively in two different cars. Always a nice dynamic to see that comparison to real life, isn't it? But uh, uh, meanwhile, on the other flip end of the spectrum, we've got in third place Sainz, all calm. Second place Leclerc looking absolutely rapid through that last corner and Verstappen in first place. Now Verstappen and Leclerc are both on soft tyres. So the top two guys in this race are trying a two stop along with Norris as he comes in now for that second stop. We continue on as we're going on to the end of the Grand Prix. So the big question is, where are the likes of Leclerc and Verstappen going to filter out once they make their stops? Have they been literally just quick enough to not for it not to matter? Maybe Verstappen's just so quick that he's done the two stop and he's and he's out ahead. And ah, there you go. He, he is. He's he's still ahead of that Red Bull car. The only man that's ahead of Verstappen is Leclerc, and Leclerc's going to come in on the very next lap, I would assume. So Verstappen really has just been that quick that he's made the two stop the faster strategy even though all the calculations said the one stop would be the way to go uh, in reality Verstappen's just overrided that with his pure pace lap after lap you, you've got to commend it you've got to say just yeah we just haven't been very quick uh, but it happens you know I'm not going to be matching Verstappen every single race he is 100 rated like was the case last season with Leclerc there was, I couldn't match Leclerc for like eight races at the end of season two so there's probably more races to come where Verstappen just looks untouchable compared to us which is going to be part of the challenge this season, not just fighting other people and other cars, but our very own teammate in our own piece of machinery. But we mentioned Leclerc just there. Well, he's actually right in the mirrors behind us in P4. He's made a second stop. He has come out behind some cars, but he's looking rapid off that. And uh, we didn't use too much ERS because I usually save it for the back straight. And so he's uh, got himself to the inside there. We leave him the space because he is fully alongside us. We have to go across the curb to even give him some room on the inside there. But we've got the, the better racing line, but I've just set him up for a good overtake because he's He's going to have DRS here. We use the ERS. Like I said, I like to use most of it on the back straight here. But uh, he's surely going to fly by with DRS. We're using Rich Mix as well. But it's going to be inevitable, really. He's on a set of medium tyres. We stop using ERS halfway down the straight because I want to save some for Sector 3. And Leclerc is on the outside. I'm going to fight him as much as I can. But in the end, is it going to be any use as on the exit? We just can't get it. We get a bit of a good jump with ERS, though, off that exit. Can we have a look on the outside? It's a nice little roll through. We are there, but we got on the curb and Leclerc will hold position 
and maintain the P3. And that's probably the most I'm going to be able to fight Leclerc. Because already in one corner's time, he's already getting away from us here in this same sector of mediums. And that is the case. On that 27, he walks us away from us. And uh, on board here, as we look behind us at Ricardo, who's closed up and looking, is, he's looking much better in this race. Up ahead of us, top left there, Leclerc has just gone and overtaken Sainz. So that's why I didn't fight Leclerc too much. He had much better pace. He was not in our race. He was racing Sainz and he's overtaken him for P2 in this Grand Prix. Meanwhile, our race is with Ricardo, who I said looked much better in this last part. The tyre wear has been affecting me a little bit more than I wanted it to on these hards. It hasn't been feeling as good as they did at Australia or Brazil, for example. And so having to go very defensive, get the elbows out left and right to defend against Ricardo, And we'll keep on doing that on towards the last half of the Grand Prix. But Max Verstappen comes across the line to win the Vietnam Grand Prix. It's the second win of the season for the team. His first, though, for the team. Very decent stuff. Well deserved. He's dominated the entire race weekend. Pole, the win, and faster slap, I believe, I think. So he's got the whole triple thing going there. Leclerc second, Sainz third. We come home in a pretty decent P4, I'd say, considering the race we had, the scrapping we had at the start. I think we're lucky to come in P4, actually. Plenty of action here in Hanoi, a memorable race and an impressive victory. Ant, talk to me. What do you think it was that sealed the win for them? I think that smart tyre management on track and very smooth driving definitely assisted in their victory today. That combination meant they got the absolute maximum out of their tyres at all times. Well, I'm thoroughly exhausted after the excitement of that race, but I'm sure it's nothing compared to our drivers here. They've worked hard to make it up there, and it's great to see them make their way out onto the podium. So like we said, the first time Verstappen has won in our colours. Lovely to see him on the top step in those overalls. Indeed, Leclerc second place, Sainz in third. And just reinforces with me and P4. So far, it really is looking like it's going to be maybe a little top four bubble of basically all the people that were relating to the story we've had so far in my team. Very, very nice indeed. As I mentioned many times last episode, you know, it just is poetic, you know, not to, to make a meme out of it as you, some of you guys were already doing. But it's just, I can't use any other words to explain it. It's just actually really nice to see a bit of a story forming here of, you know, Leclerc, the man who beat me last season to the championship, my current teammate, my old teammate, and me. It just seems like it's just us four constantly there. It's us four on the championship. Unfortunately, Leclerc takes the lead by two points, and we're now level on points with Verstappen, having got the same results, basically, just in the other uh, uh, different direction. But uh, it's uh, very tight, but it's only the third race. It's so it's so early, so I'm not even going to think about the championship fight quite yet until we get to about halfway. But what I am going to say is, to, to see Lewis Hamilton still be on zero points, nil point, for this season is crazy to me. Like, his AI, you guys know from not only this game, but the last game as well. His AI is usually so consistent and so bloody quick everywhere. The, 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 he's just gone so unlucky, but also he's been making mistakes and just not been himself in the races. He's not been attacking, not been fast enough. It's just a very, very odd situation for Mercedes to be in. They're down in P5. If Alpha Tari and Renault actually pulled their finger out, they could overtake Mercedes easily in the championship if they actually, actually just got some solid points in the bottom half of the top 10. So it's going to be intriguing to see how that goes on. Will this bad luck continue for Mercedes for the entire season? If it does, it's going to be a very, very odd looking championship, but in, in, a, in a very good way I guess with us Ferrari Red Bull maybe even McLaren getting involved but guys we did enjoy that third round of this season a very exciting race I'm sure you'll agree with all that chaos at the start and then well Verstappen gets his first win I'm sure a lot of you guys who voted Verstappen in to be our teammate for this season will be happy to see him on the top step for the first time in our colors if you are then be sure to hit that like button let me know what you thought in the comments below if you are new around here then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content I've been Arifo hope you guys enjoy today I'll see you guys next time goodbye